When I first got started in electrical engineering, there wasn't a whole lot of information available to beginners, especially when it came to power electronics. Most material I found online was intended for people with a lot of experience and often only pertain to a super specific topic. I had to scour the internet for years, collecting bits and pieces of information, slowly compiling my own library of resources and helpful information on power supply design. Over time, and through a lot of trial and error, I eventually learned the ins and outs of power electronics. So now I wanna make some videos to help out people who are in a similar situation to what I was in all those years ago. If you're watching this, maybe you're trying to get started with learning power electronics, or maybe you've been doing some stuff on your own, but you're feeling a bit stuck and not really sure what to do next. That's where I think this series that I'm titling Power Electronics from the Ground Up will really come in handy. In this series, I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the world of power electronics, sharing basically everything that I've accumulated over the years. From theory of operations to design and testing, my goal is to not only pass on the knowledge and skills that I have learned throughout my career as an electrical engineer, but also to equip you with the tools to learn things on your own so that you can go wherever your journey may lead you. So without further ado, here's my introduction to power electronics from the ground up. So the first thing I want to talk about is, what do I mean when I say power electronics? If you ask ChatGPT, power electronics is the branch of electronics that deals with the conversion, control, and management of electrical power. And while I do think that's a pretty accurate description, I don't really think that's a very helpful description to a beginner. So the way I would describe power electronics to a beginner is we're basically taking one voltage and converting it to another voltage. And that's pretty much it. Whether it's stepping a higher voltage down to a lower voltage, such as the case when you're converting 12 volts to say 3.3 volts, or stepping a lower voltage up to a higher voltage, for example, converting 3.6 volts to say 7.1 volts. The reason we need to do these voltage conversions is because electronic circuits don't all operate at the same voltages. For example, a device could require 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts, so you would have to design power supplies to regulate and manage all three of those voltage dom domains. Now, there are many different circuits that can do these voltage conversions for us, and they are categorized into what are known as topologies. A topology refers to the basic arrangement of electronic components in the power supply circuit. There are many different topologies, each with their own unique set of benefits and drawbacks. In this series, we're going to cover all of the important topologies, including things like how they work, how to design them, and how to choose the right one for your application. As a beginner, I recommend getting familiar with the flyback, buck, and boost converters first, as those are by far the most common power supply topologies you will see in modern electronics. If you want a great resource for learning about power supply topologies, I highly recommend you check out TI's Power Topologies Handbook. It's a free PDF available online that will show you not only the circuit configurations, but also some key graphs and figures to help you understand how the circuit operates. It's available completely free online and there will be a link to it in the description. The next important topic I want to cover is regulator ICs. Now, if you're not familiar with what a regulator IC or integrated circuit is, then take a look at any type of printed circuit board. You see the little black squares, the chip looking things on the board. Those are all integrated circuits, right? Now, I will make a dedicated video on this topic because there's just so much information to cover. But to give you a very quick overview as to what the regulator ICs are, these are like the brain of the power supply. These specialized integrated circuits connect to different parts of the power supply circuit so that they can maintain and regulate the output voltage. In other words, they control the behavior of the power supply circuit and actually make it do the voltage conversion. While it is their primary duty to generate a steady output, modern power supply ICs come equipped to handle various fault conditions such as short circuits, over temperature conditions, and inadequate voltage levels. My advice to beginners on this topic is to pace yourself. There's just a lot of information to cover. You're not going to become an expert on regulator ICs overnight. So just take it one day at a time, one project at a time, and just learn as you go. 
I will make a more in-depth video about regulator ICs, including how to choose them and how to use them. One great resource I recommend for learning about regulator ICs is going to be the manufacturer's website. There are a ton of different prominent manufacturers in regulator ICs, including like linear technology, analog devices, and my personal favorite, which is Texas Instruments. Specifically, if you go on TI's website, which I highly recommend you do and get familiar with, they have a great product page where you can search through their entire catalog of regulator ICs. They also include free resources such as data sheets, application notes, and other materials for learning about how to use these electronic components. And this leads you to the last topic I want to cover, which is learning resources, especially for beginners. These are going to be some helpful resources that can aid you on your journey to becoming an expert in power electronics. So the first one, and this should come to no one's surprise, is going to be TI's website, specifically the reference design section of their website. This is where you can get free access to literally thousands of different designs for a variety of applications. These reference designs will often include their schematics, bill of materials, PCB layout diagrams, and other import materials so you can study and learn from the designs of engineers who have been in the industry for a very long time. Another great resource you can find on TI's website is their E2E forum. This is a forum that is staffed by not only TI engineers, but also engineers such as myself who will post questions about a variety of topics, anything you can think of pretty much, and you'll get answers from the community there, including you know TI engineers, people like myself on there. So the next thing is going to be some really powerful design tools you can use whenever we start designing our power supply circuits. So the first one is going to be the Webbench Power Designer, which is again on TI's website. This is a great tool for helping you get started with your designs. Basically the way it works is you input some of your initial parameters and then it will spit out a ton of uh, rough sketches of circuits that you could possibly use. But most importantly, and this is how I typically use it, is it gives you a recommended regulator IC that you can start out with, right? So I like to use that as a starting point for my designs. I, I usually always do the final calculations myself and I'll go back through that, but I use that to kind of get, get um, things started. So I have an idea of maybe a regulator IC I can use as well as um, some other options or finds a bunch of different options for you. So the next tool is going to be the Power Stage Designer by TI. This is actually an application that you can download onto your computer and kind of run standalone um, that's not on their website. And this kind of does a similar thing to their Webbench Power Designer, but this offers some other interesting features when it comes to designing what I'll call like supporting circuitry for your power supply, such as RC snubbers and your compensation control loop. Don't worry, we'll cover those in other videos if you don't know what those are, but they're pretty handy tools to help you with that phase of the design. So in review, here are the main things you need to do as a beginner if you're trying to get started with learning about power electronics. Number one is learn the common topologies. Remember I said that buck, boost, and flyback were probably the three most important ones for you to familiarize with yourself as they are the most common topologies. You need to understand how they work and the key components that make up those circuits. Number two is learn about the regulator ICs. As I mentioned before, there's just a ton of information to cover here, and I don't want you to think that you have to become an expert in this area before you can get started with designing anything. I would say the main goals for a beginner are just to be able to select an IC that will work and know how to wire it up. You don't need to worry about how to optimize all of the different parameters and pick the perfect IC for your application. Anything that will work is good enough for a beginner. And number three is going to be review all of the free resources that I mentioned in this video. This really is the key to becoming a great power electronics engineer. Even I still regularly browse through these resources to stay up to date on the current technologies and techniques that are being used in the field of power electronics. Being familiar with these tools and resources is a great way to ensure that you never get stuck on a problem and you always have somewhere to go when you need help. And that's everything I wanted to talk about in my introduction to power electronics.
As I mentioned, this video is part of a series where I will teach you everything I know about power electronics from the ground up. So check the description for a link to the playlist, as well as links to all of the resources that I mentioned in this video. And of course, feel free to subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date with any new videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.